Hi, I'm Mark, and this is Let's Vibe, the channel all about crystals and our feelings. So we are in the middle of Capricorn season, and it's been interesting. It's been an interesting season so far. Um, kind of... Uh, some unexpected <laughs> uh, twists and turns happening, at least for me. But also experiencing some, I feel like I've been experiencing a lot of new energies coming in and um, just uh, it just feels like a lot of transformation into different vibrations, different higher frequencies. Um, there's just, it seems like a lot is going on energetically um, and astrologically. So, I had been thinking, you know, what's a good stone for Capricorn season, this Capricorn season? Um, and I asked myself last night, and I am immediately, like, just immediately, the stone that came to mind is a very special stone. And I was kind of, I was a little excited to finally share this stone because I, I bought it a few years ago and I've been waiting to for the right time to to talk about it because I, I really needed to spend time getting to know this stone but that stone is Tiffany stone so this is one of my more um st stunning pieces I guess I'd say like um definitely not not your ordinary uh, crystal. But Tiffany stone is a rare stone. It's rare because it only comes from one mine in western Utah. And it's also called opalized fluorite. The, the purple, the deep violet, uh, that you see is fluorite and the white is a mixture of different minerals like I think dolomite, magnesium, but it's got small amounts of a metal called beryllium and that's what makes this a really special kind of stone because beryllium is a very rare metal and it's in very minute quantities within Tiffany stone but it is used that's that's why Tiffany stone was being mined so that it they could har uh, they could take out the beryllium because beryllium is used in high-tech stuff and all that so yeah, it is rare. Um, this is like a, what they'd call like a vintage piece. It was mined a long time ago, decades ago. Um, I think it was in the early 80s, maybe in the 70s as well. But I, I want to say 80s was when people were allowed to mine Tiffany Stone there in Utah. But then eventually that mine was shut down. So the mine's no longer open. Um, the Tiffany stone that you see, oh, this is what the back, it's a, it's a node. I think that's what they call these, um, kinds of formations. But yeah, so the mine's closed. So the Tiffany stone pieces that you see or that, that you come across, um, that's, uh, that's all there is like they're they're they aren't finding any new specimens like this in Utah 
However, I did read that there's a mine in Arizona that appears to have Tiffany stone, but it's it's nowhere near the the quality as the pieces from Utah. And I I can't say for sure if this I have a second piece here. I can't say for sure if this came from Arizona, but I did I was surprised to find um, Tiffany stone at a it was at a crystal shop in Washington and so right away you can see it it's it's a much different quality um tiffany stone um definitely more of that more of those other minerals present in this piece but it what i what drew me to this piece was it does have this really dark purple vein along that one side and and energetically i can feel the energy of that that tiffany stone that opalized fluorite um i think it's sometimes also called ice cream opal so you can find this was inexpensive you can find inexpensive pieces like this um again i don't know if maybe this did come from arizona or maybe from from Utah, but this one, <laughs> this one definitely came from Utah. And so the energy, you know, the energies between the two, they do share the same, you know, the same underlying vibration or frequency, but, but this piece definitely has just much more oomph to it. Uh, it's, it's, it's really quite powerful. Um, it's a high vibration stone. And I think I've had this stone about three years, maybe, actually maybe even close to four years now, three and a half years. And it's really taken me that amount of time to to really connect with this stone because because of its high vibration, but also because it's a very deep stone. So this is called, um, oh, one of the nicknames of this stone is Purple Passion. And that's because this, the energy of this crystal, it, it, it really just kind of awakens your senses, it awakens, especially your intuitive senses, your spiritual senses. Um, Tiffany stone with that, that deep purple color is great for um, honing your intuition and tapping into more of your spiritual gifts. This stone is great for um, decluttering. Um, this can be energetic decluttering, but also physical decluttering, decluttering of your space. Tiffany stone can help with decluttering your home, decluttering your aura, removing things that are no longer useful. And I think that's where it really fits well into Capricorn because Capricorn is, you know, a focused, organized, practical type of sign. Um, but at the same time, Capricorn, you know, being the sea goat, <laughs> you know, half of it is a, is, is a water element. Half of it is, um, in the sea and, and, and in that, using that as a, as, you know, symbolically, it, it points to emotions and being connected with our emotions. And that's very much this stone this this purple passion definitely gets you in tune with what your body is feeling with your emotions it it really raises your vibration and facilitates 
the enjoyment of our, you know, physical world and our physical bodies. And so it is said to be very helpful for, for romance, for sexuality, for Tantra. This is a useful, very useful for Tantric practices. And just, you know, that spiritual level of sexuality. Um, and in that sense, I, I feel this stone really connects with, with Venus, but as I say that, um, <laughs> I'm remembering, I read, uh, that, and you know, when you come across these things, it, you sometimes just take it with a grain of salt because, um, stones can be can have many different connections and many different um, meanings to different people. But what I was reading was that this stone connects with Minerva, the, Rome, the Etruscan goddess of wisdom, as well as um, Sophia and other, other goddesses of wisdom, basically. It's a very divine feminine stone and given that, you know, deep purple, intuitive, emotional connection, it, um, it connects with divine wisdom, or it connects you with divine wisdom. Um, so really, this, it's, it's a very powerful stone, and I would recommend, um, if you're, if you feel drawn to working with this stone, um, it is helpful to start out with a stone like this, a piece like this, where it's not as pretty, it's not as stunning, but it still has the energy of Tiffany stone. But just on a, a smaller scale, it's hard to just, it's hard to describe it, but it, it's just like a beginner's version Tiffany stone, basically. It did help me, you know, get familiar with the energy of Tiffany stone so that I could eventually start to connect with this, with its much more powerful uh, energy. So, yeah, uh, if you feel drawn to this stone, I think the easiest way to find specimens is on Etsy. You can find crystal sellers who are selling these vintage pieces like this. And they can get expensive. Um, not like astronomically, but there are definitely some incredibly beautiful pieces out there that are fairly expensive so but like I said you can also find more affordable pieces as well so uh I've had in the back of my mind the song for this stone for months many months now <laughs> and the song that I chose for Tiffany Stone is Forbidden Love by Madonna it comes from her Confessions on a Dance Floor album. I just think it, it really kind of resonates with that spiritual, passionate, sexual kind of energy. So I will include a link in the description box below to Forbidden Love by Madonna. And I encourage everyone to leave a question or comment. Um, I love to hear from you. I love to um, connect with my viewers. And as always, thank you so much for vibing with me.